Hello, okay, so this video is part two of what you should not do in a deposition. The first thing, there's seven different pieces we have and we'll go into some explanation here on this video. But the first thing you should not do is not telling the truth. And so what I mean by that is there's a lot of negatives there. It's important that you're truthful. At the very beginning of your deposition, you're gonna be sworn under oath. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And so therefore, it is anticipated throughout your deposition that you will be honest, and you need to be honest. As someone who's been injured on the job in a worker's compensation setting, or even as a plaintiff in a car wreck case, one of the main things you have is credibility. Credibility that you actually were injured. Credibility that your pain is what you say it is. If you lie under oath, you lose credibility. And if you lose credibility, you can lose your claim just because of the fact that the people who decide on your case may decide that you're not telling the truth. So it's very important that you are truthful throughout the entire deposition. So number two, exaggerate your injuries or exaggerate circumstances. You do not want to exaggerate. You want to downplay, if anything. You do want to tell the truth again, but you do not want to say your pain is a 10 out of 10 while you're sitting in a two and a half hour deposition, not moving, not flinching, not having to get up and stand and so forth. And I'm not saying you should do those things in your deposition. What I'm saying is your pain is probably not a 10 out of 10 if you're able to sit comfortably in the deposition chair in two and a half hours or less and not have to move. And so don't exaggerate your injuries. Don't exaggerate details. Be very truthful. Downplay. That's more important. Number three, answering questions before the other attorney who's asking them is finished. You're going to see where a lot of these things are going. A lot of the questions are background questions. What's your name? What's your address? How long have you lived there? What's your date of birth? Are you married? Do you have children? You're going to see exactly where the questions are going. But don't cut them off let them finish. We've seen some attorneys that decide that they're going to be tricky because the person's answering questions before they're finished asking them. So wait for them to ask the question completely, pause for a second or two, and then answer the question. If the question's complicated, some of our main things that we always tell people is you should say, I don't understand the question. If they ask two different questions, also known as a compound question, you may say, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that and make them repeat the question. They should only ask you one question at one time. So if there's any confusion, The most important thing is not to guess, and the most important thing is to make sure you understand the question they're asking before you respond accordingly. Number three, arguing with the other attorney. They ask you a question or they say something that you're just not happy with. The last thing you should do is argue with them. It's their deposition. They can make things a lot worse, but you should not argue with them. Answer the question, keep it as short and concise as possible, and then have them move on. Really the idea, just like I said in the other video, is answer your questions, you've gotta be there, get through the process, and get out. You don't have to volunteer information, make them ask the questions. Let's move on down the list. Walking out before it's complete. It kinda goes with arguing with the attorney. We've had situations where the injured worker got upset with questions that were being asked and decided to walk out of the deposition. Now, if you walk out and leave that deposition, that attorney can charge you potentially for having to cancel the deposition with the court reporter and can also then possibly file a motion to compel your appearance at another deposition only to do it all again. It's better to get it done, get through it, and get out. Something else you shouldn't do, or at least not recommended, is when you bring a bunch of paperwork that your attorney hasn't seen to the deposition. So you bring this big notebook, they start asking questions, and you start thumbing through it, and your attorney hasn't reviewed it. It might be a document that one, is damaging to your claim, two, doesn't help you at all, and three, you shouldn't produce it for whatever reason. So this is why it's important to share documents with your attorney, and the safer bet is to say, leave the documents at home, If they ask about the documents during the deposition, you can always say, I do have something like that at home, and in fact, I can provide it to my attorney, and my attorney will provide it to you. But don't bring a bunch of paperwork or stuff that your attorney has not reviewed and say, well, here it is, here it is, because you eliminate your attorney's ability to protect you if it's something that shouldn't be produced for whatever reason. And then the last thing we'd say on our list of seven is don't guess. If you don't understand the question, tell the other attorney you don't understand the question. If they ask you, do you know, and you don't know, say you don't know. However, if you think you know the answer, say, I think, I'm not sure, don't hold me to it, I'm not 100%, because the way the deposition transcript is typed up, there is no tone. When you read it, it just says yes, no, and so if you say "Mm, yes, that doesn't sound as confident as yes, but in that deposition transcript, it's just going to say yes. So there is no tone in those deposition transcripts, so it's important that if you're not 100% sure, that you state that in your response. 
you know, I'm not really sure, or I'm not 100% sure, but here's what I believe is the answer. And that's if you think you have an answer that is answering that particular question. If you don't know the answer, you've never known the answer, you can't know it at a hearing later, you can't know it, you just say, I don't know. If you don't remember, I don't remember. If you think you remember part of it, say, look, I think I remember this being the, the answer. Try to give them information that addresses the question if you have that knowledge. If you don't have that knowledge, and say you don't know. We hope this information's been helpful. We hope you come check out our other videos and we will see you on the next video.